Welcome to Full Gospel Fellowship. If you like what you see here, hit that thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel. Thank you and God bless. Peter chapter 3, verse 5 through 18 as we finish this chapter that we started last week. And it finishes the whole book of 2 Peter. Love that song because it always reminds us that if God cares about a flower, He cares about you. Amen. Sometimes we can think that God don't care about my measly little issue, but it's not measly and little to Him. Amen. Because what affects us affects Him. Amen? And, and, if, and if, if we're doing our best to love God and do what He tells us to do, if we've got a need, God's always going to meet that need. Amen? Amen. He's always going to meet a need that we have because just as he clothes the grass of the field, God will take care of his people who love him and as the word says, cry out to him day and night. Amen? Amen. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 5 through 18. How many knows that if you're keeping up with the things going on in the world today, God's driving people to utter dependence on him? Uh, sometimes we can look at the things going on in the world and think, well, what's going on? But God's trying to teach some people that you're not to be dependent on anything else other than me. And, and God's kicking some crutches out of the way to teach people that kind of thing. Amen? Because it's all about Jesus. Amen? It's not about some of the things that we try to put our faith and trust in. I can't put my faith and trust in me no more than I can the man down the road. But I can put my faith and trust in Jesus and what he did on the cross, and God's going to take care of me. Amen? Second Peter chapter 3, verses 5 through 18 says, uh, for, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of Him in peace without spot and blameless. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you, as also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, under their own destruction. That means they're twisting scripture. They're not believing the word. Verse 17, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Last week, in the first four verses of this chapter that we talked about, uh, we talked about how Peter said that in this letter, just like in the first letter that he's written to these particular group of Christians, his goal 
and His purpose is to stir up their pure minds to godly thinking, which is what the goal is every time we read the Word of God. And it's the same goal that we have when we come to church to listen to the Word being preached. And I heard, or my wife heard a preacher talking about this the other day, but they said a lot of churches, uh, I believe this message was from the 90s, but uh, it, it was prevalent then, it's prevalent now. But you got churches that want to hand out uh, suggestion cards, and somebody might say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you know, you're going to get, you, you give out 50 different cards, you're going to get 50 different opinions. Amen? How many knows that God's called us to do one thing? Thus saith the Lord, amen, whatever he tells us to do. So what they do is hand out these cards and they ask these people, what do you want us to preach about? What do you want us to do in the church? Instead of just simply praying and seeking God and asking Him, what do you want us to do? And what do you, Lord Almighty, want us to preach about? Because that's really what the church is called to do. Amen? We're not called to do what everybody under the sun wants us to do. We're called to do what God said do. And as long as we do that, we're going to be on the right track with Him. So, we're to stir each other up. We're to preach what the Word of God says. We're to remind each other of what God had said, has said to His people in the past because what He said to them, He's also saying to us today. That word, This Word was not just for people that went on and died and went on to be with the Lord, but Genesis to Revelations is still... Uh, it still applies to everybody today. There's something in the book of Revelation. There's something in the book of Genesis. There's something in all of the books of the Old Testament that somehow, some way, applies to uh, to our our way of life today. But we're to we're to stir each other up. We're to preach what the Word of God says. We're to remind each other of what God has said to his, to His people in the past, because what He said to them. God is also saying to us today. And we're to remind each other of the examples that God put in His Word. Examples of those who have been obedient to God as well as examples of those who have been uh, absolutely rebellious and disobedient to God. We're to encourage each other to live an obedient life for God, which brings the blessings of God on our lives and, and, and not a disobedient lifestyle, which only brings cursing and judgment. We're to stir one another up to do good works for Jesus. We, we, we come together to, to preach the Word, to build each other up, uh, to, to encourage each other to stay on track with God, especially as we see the day of the Lord approaching. Amen. We're to remind each other of, of what's going to happen in the last days, as well as always remembering that the return of Jesus could, could very well happen at any moment. And we talked about how there's going to be scoffers in the last days, both in the world and in the religious church world, who live their lives to fulfill the lusts and the desires of the flesh, who live their lives in order to serve sin instead of serving God. There will be mockers in the last days, which are the days that we are currently living in, who will say, where is the promise of the coming of Christ? Ever since our ancestors died, we've been hearing about Jesus coming back and nothing has happened Everything is the same since the beginning of time. They mock the return of Jesus. They absolutely ignore the signs of the time. People stick their head in the sand because they really don't want to know what's going on. They ignore the Word of God as the standard for godly living. They mock the, the people of God. They mock God Himself as well as all things that are godly, moral, and right. They don't believe what God's Word says. Amen. And in reference to the last days, which many people scoff at, because as they say, as many people say, we've been hearing about this stuff for years. We talked about, last week. We talked about several earthquakes that have been happening lately, as well as this coronavirus, among many other things. Amen. And we need to remember that these things are precursors to what's coming. Yeah. God's dealing with this world. God is dealing with humanity. God's warning people to get right with Him if they're not right with Him. And He's telling believers, if you're right with me, stay right with me. Amen? Uh, quit dipping your feet in the water outside of the boat. Get your feet back in the boat because what's out on the water ain't worth it. Amen? Because you might dip your feet one time too many and fall out of the boat never to return. Amen. 
He's dealing with this world. Uh, He's warning people to get right with Him. God's reminding us that His return is very soon. It is no time to play church. It is no time to get caught up in sin and addiction. It is no time to go back to the things that God has already delivered us from. Uh, God is reminding people that His coming judgment is not that far off. God's warning people that they need to get ready and they need to stay ready for Him when He comes back. And we talked about this peace plan. We're going to talk about it again. Because it's important. But we talked about this. And how many knows, and I had a preacher, I heard a preacher say this, the Antichrist isn't going to know he's the Antichrist. He's just going to fulfill the prophecy. In other words, he's not going to think to himself, I'm sure that he's doing anything wrong. How many knows that just because we're preaching about leaders that are messing up doesn't mean that in their minds they think they're doing something wrong. Last week we went through a whole list of stuff where past presidents, Democrat and Republican, have have tried to uh, mingle with dividing the land of Israel. And every single time something catastrophic happened, how many knows that in their minds they didn't know they were doing something wrong because they don't know what the Word of God says? They thought they were were doing something to bring peace. But how many knows whether we think we're doing right or not? Anything that we do outside of the Word of God is wrong. But we talked about the peace plan. uh, This this plan that's called the deal of the century that that, that President Trump and the Israeli Prime Minister have, have come up with that will divide the land of Israel because it calls for Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, to be divided with East Jerusalem to be given to the Palestines to be their capital. Then we read Joel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, which tells us that there is coming a day that when God restores the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, that He will gather together all of the nations that were hostile to His people, that He will bring them down to Jehoshaphat, And this is a coming uh, day that's coming in the future. We're talking about the Battle of Armageddon. And there, God will deal with them and enter into judgment with them there due to their treatment of His people and His inheritance, which is Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and because they have divided up God's land. God's going to bring judgment on those people and nations who have come against Israel, who have come, who have come against the Israeli people and who have divided up the land that God promised to them. As I said last week, many people will not want to hear this because it won't agree with what they choose to believe. But the church is the true church is not in the business of promoting political narratives. The true church is not in the business of promoting politics and political candidates. But the true church is in the business of glorifying Jesus Christ alone and preaching the truth. And the truth of the matter is whether it's a Democrat or a Republican in office, if this nation or if any other group of people or nation seeks to attempt to divide Israel's land in any way, God's judgment will fall on that people and on that nation because that land belongs to Israel per the Word of God Almighty. That land does not absolutely, does not belong to anybody else. Palestine rejected the proposal as of right now. Thank God for that. But we went over several examples last week, last Sunday evening, of bad things that have happened in the past to the U.S. after talk of dividing any part of the land of Israel. Uh, That kind of talk took place by past presidents and others, both by Republicans and by Democrats. And in some of those examples, some land was divided. In other examples, they only talked about doing it. But in either case, Bad things happen mostly in the form of natural disasters. Some people will call these things coincidences. But to me, there's not not any such thing as a coincidence. God's in control of everything and He knows what He's doing. I'm not going over that list again, but I will talk about what's been reported since last week. 
And whether there, there's a connection to this proposed peace plan or not, God only knows. But either way, uh, according to the Word of God, just as much as we don't want to be on the wrong side of abortion and ungodly marriage as a people and as a nation, we also don't want to be on the wrong side of dividing the land of Israel either. Because all of these things will bring about the judgment and the wrath of God. Certainly, the more things that we see going on in the world today, the more that we know that God is warning people and sounding the alarm that He is in fact coming soon. And in regards to the last days and the signs that will be prevalent in the last days, the Bible certainly talks about wars and rumors of wars. Uh, we all know the Scriptures. It talks about deadly diseases. It talks about various earthquakes in, in, in strange places among many other things. And in the book of Revelations, in chapter 9, verse 3, it says, And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth. They were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. I read that for a reason. I'm going to get to it in a minute. As we see what's happening in the world today, as we see the Bible being fulfilled right before our very eyes, as we see prophecy being fulfilled, we got to keep in mind what the Bible says in regards to the last days. And while these things may or, or may not be the actual judgment of judgments of God, they are certainly precursors to those things that are certainly coming soon. God is warning this world so that through these warnings, people would pay attention and get saved and get recommitted to God if they need to be. I read the scripture on the locusts. In a report last Monday, 360 billion locusts. 360 billion locusts produced a swarm that was this, uh, about the size of Manhattan, and it descended on Saudi Arabia and Yemen, and, and at times blocked out the sun. East Africa is being hit by these locusts. Millions of locusts have also hit Pakistan which devoured crops and left destruction behind them and all of these places that they've been. And it was reported, if nothing changes, uh, that by June, this locust outbreak could grow 500 times larger. Turkey launched deadly airstrikes against Syrian forces. I'm just telling you what's come out just this week, just since Sunday. That coronavirus cases in China have reached 20,000 people. Virus has reached 34,800 people globally, with 724 people dying from the disease all over the world. An artificial intelligence simulation run by technology executive says that if things don't change, that this coronavirus has the potential to infect as many as 2.5 billion people within 45 days and can kill as many as 52.9 million people. We got to pray for a cure. Yeah. How many knows prayer changes things? How many knows it don't have to go like this? That God wants people to pray. Amen. Hawaii was hit with a 4.2 magnitude earthquake. New Zealand was hit by 5.2 earthquake. Northwestern Tennessee has been hit by a uh, rattled by 11 earthquakes since January the seventh. 6.2 earthquake hit near Indonesia, along with 50 earthquakes throughout that region. Israel launched strikes against several targets near Damascus. Ten children alone have died from the flu just in Tennessee. A swarm of bats that they're calling a bat tornado filled the skies in the city of Australia, which forced a helicopter to not be able to land and parents were afraid to send their kids to school. A 6.0 earthquake hit the Philippines. A 3.8 earthquake sh uh, struck northern Israel, which was near the mountain where Elijah the prophet performed miracles in the Bible. A 4.7 earthquake hit off the coast of Oregon. 3.9 earthquake struck in San Bernardino ca uh, County in California. And this week alone, there were 35 tornadoes that were confirmed in the United States, including five tornadoes that touched down in Maryland in the D.C. area, which is being called unprecedented for this month. Another tornado touched down in Leesburg, Virginia. A tornado with 130 mile an hour winds touched down in Cleveland. In Alabama, Mississippi, North Carolina, and South Carolina, they were all hit by tornadoes along with widespread flooding throughout the South. Is there a connection? I don't know. God knows. 
But just like we read last week, any time talk of dividing Israel has happened, something has always followed. How many knows at the very least? As God has continued to do for the last, since, since the beginning of time, He's warning people. He's trying to get somebody's attention because God doesn't want anybody to perish. But God has called all people to come to everlasting life. Amen. That's just some of the highlights of things that have been reported just this week. God's getting people, God's trying to get people's attention. God wants us to pay attention to the signs of the times. God wants us to make sure that we're always ready for His return. God wants His people to do all that we can to warn other people every chance that we get. God is looking for some modern day Noahs who was a preacher of righteousness and who undoubtedly warned people about the coming flood. God is looking for some modern day Lots who did all that He could to warn His son-in-laws about the coming destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Though they thought that He was absolutely crazy and because they rejected the preaching of Lot, they were killed along with everybody else in in Sodom and Gomorrah. Please don't turn the truth off. Please don't turn the preaching of the gospel off. Please quit. If anybody's thinking this, please quit thinking well that's going that's not happened yet. That's going to happen way way off in the future long after I'm dead. This, uh, the return of Christ could absolutely happen tomorrow for all we know. And we don't want to be caught on the wrong side of God. Amen. God is looking for some preachers. God is looking for some modern day watchmen who don't care if the world or the religious church world is offended by the preaching of the gospel. We ain't got time to be offended. We ain't got time to sit down and shut up and worry about who wants us to shut up because their blood will absolutely be on our hands if we had an opportunity to tell them something and we didn't tell them the truth. Though they may reject it, at least they will never be able to go to God and say so and so didn't tell me anything. So what they hate you? So what they'll talk about you? Do you want them to go to hell? Then open your mouth and tell them what God told you to tell them. They may never talk to you again. Your family may desert you. Your friends may not want nothing to do with you. But I don't need friends that bad. I don't need family members that bad. I need people to come to Christ so they can be saved. Or whatever we got to do. Whatever we got to deal with. God help us to deal with it. Hate me today, but come to Jesus tomorrow because a, plant, uh, because a seed was planted in you. Yes. That's worth it. God's looking for some people that don't care one way or the other if this world or this religious church world thinks they're crazy or not because they know what's coming on this earth. And, and the true people of God, they know what's coming on this earth and they love people enough to tell them the truth. They are absolutely sounding the alarm just like Noah and Lot did so that people might listen and get into the boat before it's too late. And if you're in the boat, again, quit waiting. Quit putting your feet and your hands in the water. Get your whole self back in the boat and leave the water alone. Leave the world alone. Leave sin and addiction alone. Because it's not well, the grace of God. The grace of God gives you the opportunity to repent, not the opportunity to go sin all you want to. Amen. In reference to the scoffers and the mockers that we talked about in verse 5, uh, I'm sorry, that we talked about in the first four verses of this chapter last week who mocked the return of Jesus as well as the Word of God. Going on in verse 5, it says that they are willingly ignorant. They deliberately forget. They ignore that they ignore the fact that by the Word of God, the heavens were created a long time ago and the earth was formed out of the water and by water. Uh, in other words, everything was created by the Word of God. Nothing exists that God didn't create. So since God created all things, since He created the heavens and the earth and every single life form that exists, then certainly God will fulfill every single promise that He has ever made in His Word, including the fact that He is coming back to this earth where He will rule and reign forever in His coming kingdom with His people for all of eternity. The bars ain't worth missing out. Drug house ain't worth missing out. An illicit relationship isn't worth missing out on that. Whatever the case may be. Uh, running my brother and sister down every chance I get isn't worth missing what God has for people who love Him. Verse 6, the same God that created the heavens and the earth 
as well as the water that is on and in the earth, is also the same God that brought the flood, which destroyed all living things on the earth, except for Noah, his family, and the animals that were in that ark. And verse 7 tells us that by the same word of God which created all things, the present day world as we know it, it is reserved. It will be refined by fire. Just, just as the flood was the judgment of God on the earth in Noah's day, God's fiery judgment will come on all ungodliness in the near future. Just as God judged the world back then, God will certainly judge the world when Jesus returns. Our present day world, the heavens and the earth are being reserved for God's coming judgment. And then in verse 8, uh, verse 8 tells us not to be ignorant because one day is with the Lord uh, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. In other words, God doesn't look at time like we do. What may seem like a long time to us is not a long time at all from God's perspective. One thousand years is like one day with him and vice versa. And in regards to people who think that the, that the return of Jesus may be way off in, in the great beyond somewhere because it, because the, after all they've been hearing about this stuff for years God is telling us that as he regards time it could absolutely happen any moment so get ready yeah. Thank you, Lord. and the point of verse 8 is found in verse 9 when it says that God is not slack concerning his promise as men count slackness but rather God is patient he is long suffering to everybody yeah. as we might think that we're ready to go to heaven right now as we might think that I wish God would take me to heaven right now as we might think that we want God to wrap things up quickly sometimes, especially when we see this stuff going on in the world. Uh, and, and as much as we want to think uh, that Jesus, uh, hurry up and come back, God is patient. God is giving mankind every chance, every opportunity. God is giving everyone as much time as He can uh, to give everybody in this world an opportunity to come to Christ and get saved because God's will is for nobody to die and go to hell. But God's will, God's desire, God's purpose is for everybody to come to repentance and for everybody to get saved. But that is up to everybody to make that decision for themselves. If you don't want God, you don't have to have God. But you're going to be sorry one day that you didn't accept Him when you had the opportunity. Somebody might say, well, why is that? Why would God allow somebody to go to hell just because of that? Because you said that the sacrifice that He made on that cross wasn't good enough for you. Because you said that what He did on that cross by giving His life, when by all rights it should have been you and I up there, was not good enough for you. Amen. God allows us to make this choice for ourselves. God will never make anybody choose Him. Verse 10 tells us that the day of the Lord, the return of Jesus, the events that are in the Bible that are to come on this earth, the coming judgment of God will come like a thief in the night. It will come suddenly and unexpectedly. It will come before we know it. What we think might be a long time now, all of a sudden when that day comes, suddenly like a thief in the night, uh, uh, it, it won't seem like uh, it was forever then. And when that day does come, I, I, I don't think that we're going to be thinking, why did it take you so long, Lord? I don't think we'll be thinking anything like that. Because when He does come back again, I do not believe that it will seem to us like it's, it has taken that long. The day of the Lord will come before we know it. And it's going to be a great day for believers, but it will be a terrible day for those that do not believe in Jesus. And those that do choose not to believe in Him, they will never be able to say that they were not given an opportunity. At that time, the heavens will pass away with a great noise. The elements will be, uh, will be destroyed by fire. The earth as we know it, along with the things of this world, will absolutely be burned up, which speaks to passing from one condition to another condition. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Old things will pass away. Behold, all things will be new. And in that new heaven and new earth, there will be no more sin and evil. There will be no more death. The fiery judgment of God will burn up everything that is unclean. Only that which is godly, which is pure and holy, will remain in God's coming kingdom. Verses 11 and 12. Seeing that all of these things are going to happen exactly the way the Bible says that they will. Since the heavens will disappear with a roar. 
since the elements will be destroyed by fire, since the earth and all of its works shall be burned up, because the word says it's going to happen. Amen. Since we know that Jesus is coming back soon, since we know that God's judgment is coming on all ungodliness and on all who are ungodly, since we see the signs of the times all around us, then we need to really look at ourselves and think about what type of people that we ought to be. We ought to be looking forward to and always anticipating the return of Jesus. And as we do so, we need to be people who live our lives the right way. Amen. We need to live lives of holiness and godliness, which speaks to living our lives in obedience to God and His Word. And if we do mess up, we need to repent and keep on living for God. And knowing that all of these things that we're talking about are coming, knowing what we've read in the Word, knowing what we know that has been preached in this church, we ought to make sure that we're living godly lives and we need to make sure that we stay on track with Jesus. Don't be like the people of Noah's day who would not listen to Noah and got caught up in the flood. Well, brother, I said a prayer 40 years ago. What are you doing today? What are you doing today for God? Are you still living for Him? Because please don't believe the message that tells you because you said a prayer 40 years ago that somehow that turns into unconditional security which then turns into whatever way, way I want to live, God's going to save me anyway. That is a lie from the pits of hell and that is, that is wrong. What you I did two days ago don't matter. What I do today is what matters with God. You see, I gotta get, I'm not saying i got to get re-saved every day. I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. But I do have to get up every day and make the decision that this day, Lord, is your day and this day I'm going to serve you and I'm not going to serve anything else. Let's not be like the people in Noah's day that didn't listen and got caught up in the flood. Let's not be like uh, Lot's son-in-laws who didn't listen to him and who perished with everybody else. But let's be people who are always ready and who stay ready. Let's be a separated people, separated from sin and from the world for God's will and purposes for our lives. Let's be people who don't take what Jesus did for us for granted. Let's be people who don't take God's grace for granted. Let's leave sin and this world alone. Let's get serious about our walk with God. So when the day of the Lord does come, then it will be a great day for us because we're going to get to be with Jesus forever. Let's live holy and godly lives with the help of the Holy Ghost which God provides to everyone who is saved and which enables all of us to live the Christian life that God calls all of us to live. Amen. Verse 13 just tells us that as true believers according to God's promise which never fails, and which will be fulfilled, absolutely fulfilled, we eagerly look for a new heaven and a new earth where only the righteousness of God dwells. In verses 14 through 17, since we're looking for these things, since we know what's going to happen, since we look forward to the coming of Christ, we need to be sure that we make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with God. Amen. If you're saved, stay safe. You're right with God, stay right with God. If you strayed, get back in the boat. Repent. If you're in the boat, stay in the boat. Quit waiting in the water. Quit jumping out for a swim and jumping right back in. If you're in the boat, stay in the boat and don't end up drowning. Amen. Peter then says in this letter that we need to keep in mind that God's patience is salvation. Just as Paul the Apostle has written about. In God's love, mercy, compassion, and patience, God has held judgment back. Which may seem like a long time to us, but He's done it in order to bring those who are lost to Himself so they can be saved. God could come back anytime He wanted to. But God's waiting. God's holding a judgment that He could certainly be totally justified and bring it on this earth today. God is holding that back to give everybody an opportunity to come to Him. One more time, He's pruning that, 
He's pruning that tree. He's trying to cut some dead limbs off that tree. He, he says, God, God the Father, give, give me just a little more time to prune that tree and let's see if that thing bears some fruit. God's given people an opportunity to get saved and bear some fruit. Uh, to, 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 to grow up and start, start, start uh, producing the, the, the love of God in their lives. The characteristics and the attributes that God has called everyone to produce. In His love and His mercy and His compassion and patience, God has held judgment back so that, he could, so that He would give everyone every chance in the world to come to Him. And Peter goes on to encourage us that since, that, since we've been warned, since we've been warned now, we, we can't say we haven't been. If, if you never thought you was warned before, if you're here tonight, you've been warned. Since we've been warned, since we know what the Word of God says, since we've had the truth preached to us, then we need to always be on guard. Amen. Why? So that we are not deceived and led astray by those who twist and distort Scripture just like they did in Paul's day, which will lead to their own destruction. Destruction awaits all who will twist this Scripture for ill-gotten gain or for any other reason. We don't want to follow that path. Don't follow anybody that distorts Scripture and takes away from the Gospel or adds to it. Let's not follow the path of the ungodly. Let's not allow evil people to deceive us and lead us away from the truth. But let's grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ by keeping our faith in Christ and in the cross and by making sure that we read and that we study God's Word uh, for ourselves and that we listen to the preaching of the Word which will increase our knowledge in God and which will keep us on track with Jesus. You see, if I'm, if I, if I'm diligent in, in studying the Word and doing what it says and knowing what the Word says, if I, if, I, if I stay, keep my life in the will of God, I will not be deceived because my faith will remain where it's always supposed to be, and that's in Christ and in the cross. As we play something, if you need prayer before we go, please come up here and let's pray for you.